Hello and welcome to another episode of Learn Anatomy by Drawing. I'm Dr. Mark Braidwood and in this lesson we're going to draw the anterior aspect of the bony pelvis. So let's get drawing. So as always let's look at the reference. It's a complex form and it's complex because it's doing a lot of heavy lifting so to speak. It connects the upper skeleton via this joint here. So this is where the lumbar skeleton joins up with the sacral spine. Uh, connects the upper body with the lower body via the hip joint here. Okay, so here's where the lumbar spine joins in and this is the hip joint here. So it's uh, doing a lot of work. Now we we have this sort of ring structure uh, here as you can see and we're going to capture that, we're going to simplify that with the form of a bucket. So as always, we're going to start with our, our compass, which just orients us to our view. So this is an anterior view, and this is the superior aspect, the inferior aspect. This would be the left-hand side, and this would be the right-hand side, because we're looking straight on. Okay, so we're going to start a bucket. So if you haven't watched my video on how to draw better lines, I recommend you do so. But to draw an ellipse, we're just going to trace, without touching the pencil, we're going to trace an ellipse like this, and until we feel comfortable with our shape, we just pop the pen down like this and just go over it, okay? And do your best, it doesn't matter if it's perfect, we can clean it up later. And then a couple of lines, angled lines down like this, and join those up. This is going to be the middle of our next ellipse, the bottom of the bucket. You can also do that just so that with a light line, so we have the middle of that. So we need equal uh, ellipse, uh, equal sides around this central point. It is going to be a little bit fatter just because of the rules of perspective. We don't need to go into that, but a little bit fatter. And again, this the ghosting allows you to sort of get that in there. Okay, so looking back at the reference, this part here drops down to this level here. Okay, so we have to capture that. And how we're going to do that is about, it comes down about halfway, so this line here, about halfway there, I'm just going to draw a bit of a smile there, like this, and it's a smile because it's wrapping around the front of our bucket. And we're going to draw this here, the pubic symphysis, okay. So that is just from here, about halfway down, this line here, just a rectangular structure like that in the middle, and then from there it forms this arch here called the pubic arch. So we'll just drop a line down there like that and like that. Okay, and that gives us our pubic arch. Next we're going to draw the hole that goes here on the reference. You can see here it's called the obturator foramen and it's forming kind of a circular structure. It really doesn't matter. It's going to vary from, from uh, reference to reference. But just if you get a rough shape like this in there and try and get it Roughly the same on the other side, that's the obturator foramen. Now, important structures pass through there, we're not going to deal with those today on this video, but it's there for a reason. Foramen means whole. You'll hear uh, a lot about that in uh, that word's used a lot in uh, anatomy. Now, interestingly, this varies from male to female. So, in a, in a male, the angle of this arch is 90 degrees, in a female, it's 120. And I encourage you to, to add those in as little reference points for you. The reason is, uh, you know, the female has to have a wider pelvis to facilitate passage of the fetus through the pelvis. Okay, next we're going to draw this structure here, which is the uh, sacral spine. And if we look at it, we drop a line down here, it's sort of roughly in the middle of this, so we need a, a kind of a faint reference mark there, and in terms of the height, it's roughly half of this here. So let's just draw that in like that, a bit of a smile, and the bottom edge is about that sort of thickness, have a look at that, just a bit further on, again it's not critical to get right. And up the top here, we're going to draw this here. This, this is a uh, would be a, where a disc would sit, and the lumbar spine 
is up here as it articulates in with the sacral spine as it joins in. So let's just draw a, an ellipse shape there to, to capture that. All right, uh, now on this reference, this part of the sacral spine that comes in like a an arrow here, we can see the bottom of it here. Okay, so we just draw that in and it angles in like this. Now, you'll see different amounts of this in, in references depending on your angle. So this can disappear below here. Now, if you imagine you can make a pelvis with your hands, these, this is your, uh, your obturator frame in here and that's the back of the pelvis. So depending on what you're looking at, you're either staring deep down into the bucket and you can't see the obturator foramen, foramina, or you are looking straight at it like that and you see less inside the bucket, okay? So depending on what, what angle you've got, this will, this will vary. Now, just drop a, a, a midline through there just to orient us. And you can see here on the reference, these structures here, they're, they're vertebrae, but they're very fused together in the sacral spine. And we're seeing all of them, and there are four lines there. So let's do that one, two, three, four. And then just add these, you can see those holes there. Just add those little shapes like that. Okay. All right, next we're going to draw the ilium, which is these big wing-shaped structures that drop down, as we said. Okay. So they, if we come about halfway back here, just draw two little lines like that, which is representing that top part there where it starts to drop away. And to about here. Just going to draw a line. You can see how useful the bucket shape is. Just draw those like that and make that a thicker sort of sausage shape because that's um, that bone there here is quite thick. And then this just drops down and forms the, the front part of the pubic bone here. Okay, so come down like this all the way and then this one just drops down like that. Okay. Now, the posterior aspect drops down here and forms this structure here, which is the sacroiliac joint. We're going to label all this in a moment, so don't stress. So we just drop that down like that into that joint there. And then you can see the this will be the anterior portion of the sacroiliac joint, because this is going back, wraps around like this and forms also part of that front bit there. So let's get that in. So from here, wrap that around and bring it around like this. We just put that pubic symphysis in there. Okay. Now there's one last thing to just to add in, and that is the acetabulum, which is this here and it is where the hip joins in. So it is, on this view at least, which is what we're copying, of course, these relationships will change. The top aspect is opposite the middle of that, so just put that in. And the bottom aspect is sort of top third of the obturator foramen, so about there. And then this is a cup shape, and we'll discuss that in a moment, but because of the angle, it faces kind of sideways laterally because of the hip the way the hip joins in. So this is a, a narrow kind of ellipse. And you can see it, it does jut out a little bit. So it's it's okay to, to have that sticking out a little bit. And so then we can just join this back bit in, comes out, comes in a little bit here, and then forms, forms up with that there. So just draw that in like that. Okay, there we have a basic pelvis. Now I'm going to go ink that in, uh, at the, and I encourage you to do so as well. Uh, any kind of pen will do, but pencil smudges, and if you want to keep these drawings for your studies and so forth, and you might like your drawing, which would be great, then I recommend you ink it in. And after we've inked it, we will come back and label it.
Okay, so now we're going to label this. You, you don't have to rub out the lines if you don't want to. Sometimes it's nice to leave them in because they give you that sense of three-dimensionality uh, of form. It, it's really up to you. I've just uh, done it for clarity's sake. So uh, but now we're going to label it. I leave the labeling to the end because I don't want to over overload you. The drawing is, uh, is enough. Uh, okay. So this big bone here is the ilium. And somewhere along here, it depends on, on, the, on the reference and on the form, but you can just put it about here, is, is an important structure, an important landmark called the asus, which is the anterior superior um, iliac spine. So anterior superior. Now you can feel this on your body. Uh, if you reach down to your belt level, there's that hip bone there that you can feel, uh, uh, sorry, the asus there that you can feel uh, right on the, on the front lateral side of your abdomen down the bottom. Uh, I use it when I'm examining a patient's spine. It's, a, it's an important landmark because if you wrap something around like that, if you basically wrap your fingers around, it's about L3, L4, so it helps me orient where I am. This was the obturator for Amen. For Amen meaning hole. Much less impressive. Okay, this is the ischium. This guy here, that's the pubic symphysis. Now, this is a joint, and in high impact traumas, it can actually break and it can form what's called an open book fracture. If you think about it, if it breaks there, the, the pelvis can open up like that and it can be very dangerous. There are lots of ligaments stabilizing the pelvis, which we haven't drawn in this drawing, but because of the many delicate structures that pass through here, nerves to the legs and nerves involved in voiding and so forth, uh, they're, they're uh, difficult to treat and, and have poor outcomes. And this here is called the acetabulum. Now, it's a running joke that early anatomists and pathologists were a little bit obsessed with food and they would often label or name things uh, after food. Berry aneurysm uh, is an example, maple syrup, urine disease, nutmeg, liver. And this is no exception. If you know that vinegar is also called acetic acid, this essentially means vinegar cup. I have no idea if it actually looks like a vinegar cup, but let's uh, give them the benefit of the doubt. That is where the hip joins in. We'll get to the hip in, uh, and the femur and other videos. Okay, this joint here is the sacroiliac joint. Now the pubic bone this is actually made up of three bones, and in the lateral view of the pelvis, we'll get to that, but the, this here is really is the pubic bone, hence the pubic symphysis. And lastly, we have here the sacrum. All right, that is how to draw the bony pelvis. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you can practice with a quick draw or from your own memory and check out our other videos.